And this is going to be specifically about post-processing, using post-processing in Unity, specifically the post-processing stack version 2. Then when you're using that, then people often ask me, you know, how do I use it? How does it impact performance? Where is best to use it? How do I program it to use it in basic gameplay features, whether it be, you know, programming the systems on and off, just so you can turn, say, you might turn the ambient occlusion off, or turn it back on, do it in a gameplay scenario, or add motion blur to visualize sort of being drunk in a game. So there's loads of ways that you can do it, and I think it's important to know the specifics about setting it up, all the different image effects or post-processing effects, and being able to use that in your different scenarios that you choose within game. So there's a few things that you have to remember when you're using the post-processing stack, once you've imported it into your scene, which is fairly straightforward and you get it from the Unity GitHub. Now, when you're on your main camera, you want to make sure that HDR is enabled for high dynamic range because it works well with some of the image effects. You want to disable MSIA because we've got some anti-aliasing solutions on the actual post-processing themselves. On the main camera, you can click to add a uh, component and choose to add a post-processing layer. So from there, it'll add a few things to it. We want to make sure that we specify a layer that we want the post-processing to be on. So on the bit where it specifies layer, we want to choose post-processing. Obviously, if you want to create a new layer in the top right of the inspector, you can choose to add a new layer if post-processing isn't already available. We can choose to add different levels of anti-aliasing if we choose to want that. And some are faster, the fast approximate, is the fastest and then the temporal is what we'll use for this desktop application and then tier if you imagine trying to create a diagonal line which is as straight as possible within say a game like minecraft you know because they're made of actual cubes you will always get a sort of jagged look to your lines because it's technically made of pixels just like the screen is and what anti-aliasing does is try to sort of fill in between each of those sort of pixels to smooth out that line and obviously what if you try and add the anti-aliasing anti to a big amount into your scene if you're getting really jagged shadows you can lose a lot of you can use lose some detail in textures or model quality so you can adjust things like the sharpness to try and bring that up but it's sometimes a performant or very sort of cost intensive thing for the engine so if you're choosing for mobile and things it's you have to cater it to the thing that you're developing for so as once we've got all that set up we can actually create a volume so we can right click in the hierarchy, choose 3D object, and then choose post process volume. And from there is we get a new game object that gets added and it's a post processing volume. We can set this to global because it's something that can affect the entire scene. We can set its layer to post process and we can leave the weight at one and priority at zero. And we're gonna to need to create a profile so it knows what effects to use. So in my scripts folder in the project, you can put it anywhere, you can right click create and choose a post-processing profile. I'll just call this PP for short sure because it makes it easy for you to be able to see and understand. So when we're from there, we can add a bunch of effects and usually the ones that are fairly good and I'll show them as they go along is ambient occlusion, auto exposure, bloom, chromatic aberration is one that I usually try and avoid because it simulates the sort of distortion around the edges, but it's not it's not one that I like, the color grade. <coughs> Screen space reflections and vignette. And these are the specific ones for um, using in the Viz, ArcViz Pack 6, which I'm using in the background here, which has got really nice lighting, but it's something that you know is really nice to use. So on the post-processing volume in the hierarchy, we want to make sure we add that post-processing profile to that. And then that's set up and on that back on our camera, we want to make sure that we add the post-processing value volume to the actual slot in the actual camera itself. So if we go back onto the post-processing volume or we go onto the PP that we made in the project, we can choose to adjust any of these post-processing that we might want. So we can choose to affect the actual ambient occlusion, which adds darkened areas to often um, contact objects within your scene. So if you imagine between your fingers where light will go into that sort of parts of your hand, it will bounce around but it can't escape because it's um, really sort of refined objects which are close together and it creates that look of realism, realism in scenes. So it's a really nice way so you can have mode, intensity, colour 
and we can set the intensity higher and as you can see in my game mode down at the bottom you don't want to overdo something like the ambient occlusion and you can set it to something like the uh, the scalable um, ambient obscurance because it makes more of a very fine look but you can often do that when you do your light bake and you can bake ambient occlusion into your scene but this post processing is seen as though it's a screen space effect that's done after everything else is rendered it can just be on top so it doesn't have to be baked into textures let's say and then we can keep our color as black we can set the auto exposure on this scene so we can set the filtering the min and the maximum and what we can do is we can set the minimum to about a minus let's say a minus 1.5 so it just brightens the overall look of our scene i'll put the lighting on in this scene and enable effects just so we can see it in the scene view as well we can also move this filtering percent and shrink it slightly and it will just bring the very edge of the sort of top of the lighting down a little bit just to create a more coherent style because you can adjust these things to your heart's content really. Bloom is another great one which simulates the look of um, objects or lights when you use a camera and often it can look blown out and you can get bleeding across different surfaces and it simulates that so when you've got a very hot spot you can keep you want to keep this fairly low so we can try say a 0.7 and keep it at one and we just get the highlighted bright spots just a little bit brighter but you don't want to overdo it because if I overdo it you can see it looks like a sort of nuclear bomb going off but obviously if that was a gameplay feature that's what you could use it for. The colour grading is another really nice one if you enable the tone mapping and you can set the tone mapping to the aces and it will just neutralise your scene so in the areas that it might look really blown out or sometimes that it can be a sort of too high too low in terms of the levels it can just neutralize it a little bit and you can set any of the facts on these and you can set you know specifically if you want the scene to look warmer colder we could literally let's say i adjust the temperature and we add it and you can make the scene look overall a slightly more orange tinge and it just looks nicer and we can slightly adjust the saturation and contrast just to bring it out roughly in the values of minus to positive 20 either side and it just brings out a little bit of more of the contrasting shadows in the overall scene. Uh, screen space reflections and it's another one it does a lot of calculations in the background and looks at materials and the models that are there and will take into account where the reflection should be realistically and if in this case with a sort of physically based look around we can select all the different elements and you can set the resolution but you actually want to adjust some of the settings based on the performance that you want to reach within your game because mobile probably wouldn't support this feature and you can adjust where it cuts off in screen space so screen space is only directly where the camera is rendering and it goes a long way to add a lot more realism to specifically reflective surfaces and things that need accurate reflections which is far more accurate than the reflection reflection props in unity and then vignette is a nice one if you choose to want to just darken the very corners very much seen in movies and it allows you to just darken those corners and make it very focused on the scene that you're looking at specifically so i think all in all even with just taking um literally a few minutes to bulk up the scene if i go to my post processing volume and just disable it you can see that the scene looked at originally even though it's got really nice lighting overall it was looking a bit dark a bit dull and looked a bit you know sort of a bleak winter's day really and when you spice it up with a few image effects or post pressing effects you can make it look a lot more towards realism by breaking up the sort of evening out the neutrality and making it just overall brighter more appealing and adding the overall levels of post-processing which are just done every pixel over the top of everything of the other rendering features that you've got within game. So we wanted to be able to turn these on and off. So what we can do is we can create our own script and the script allows us to control that. So what we can do is right click in my scripts folder, click create and choose C sharp and I will call this settings for instance 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to create a toggle to be able to toggle these on and off. So I'll open up in Visual Studio and depends how quick your machine is, is how long it'll take. So what I like to do here is once we're in Visual Studio like we are now, what we want to do is use a new reference at the top. So a collection to like we would if we were trying to use UI components when we're programming. We're going to actually want to use Unity Engine dot rendering dot post processing with a semicolon at the end. And that allows us to access some specific features that we need. So what I'll do is I'll start by writing square brackets serialize field. And from here, I usually like serialize field just so we can see the private uh, variable visible in the inspector. And then we're going to use something called the pro a cross process volume. And then from there, I'm going to call this variable just active volume. So we're just giving it a name because that's the thing that we're going to reference for the actual the volume that created for the first for the actual post processing. Now we're going to create a method to hold our toggle when we create a simple UI. So I'm going to create a simple method, like I said, so public void, and I'll call this, let's say for instance, the toggle the AO. We're going to turn the ambient occlusion on and off because it's quite an easy one to see. So then we're going to put a parameter or pass a parameter to our method and we'll just call it full value. And that's going to be something that if it's true or false, depending on the toggle, toggle's just a true or false tick box. And then I'm going to say, yeah, we'll turn it off and we'll turn it on depending on what we do. So that's great. We're going to create a local reference to the actual image effect that we're going to use. So this one's called ambient occlusion and you can see that it's working because it'll turn blue. And if it's, if I got rid of this line, for instance, you can see that it's not referenced anymore and it'll say that it doesn't exist in this context. And so well that, so we need the line at the top to be able to make that apparent. Now I'll shorthand this and just call this AO with a semicolon and it's just our local variable. Now what I can do is I can change this, I'll start writing the code and I'll reference active volume that we created as our variable. Then we'll say dot profile dot get try get settings and then we're gonna we're literally active actively getting the active profile which was the the post processing that we wanted and then brackets we're going to say out and we'll say choose our local variable and we'll put a semicolon and that's pretty much the be on and end all of actually getting the profile now i want to say that if it's true or false you know what do we want to do so that we'll say that if value and because i've just put value in brackets it just means if value is true so for any true point we'll say that ao dot active equals true and then under here, we'll write else. And then I'll have two curly brackets below there. And I'll just say that AO.active equals false. So in this instance, it was really easy. We got the profile. We created a local variable to the profile. And we say that if it's true or false, we're going to just change the image effect of the post pressing on and off. Really nice, really easy, simple. Then if we save that, and go back in back into unity and what i'll do is i will select let's say my manager script here and i'll just add this setting script here and it's looking for our post processing volume we can drag that from the hierarchy into our slot we need just a really quick ui so we'll right click in the hierarchy click ui and we will choose toggle and because i've got toggle i can go into 2d mode turn the lighting off and the post processing go to toggle just press F and you can see my toggle here. We can drag the toggle, say, to the bottom corner. We can just anchor it to the bottom left. You can potentially, if you wanted to, change the label to, let's say, toggle AO. Change the text color to white just so we can see it better. You can see my example here. If we select the toggle now and we choose to choose an on value changed event, we'll add the plus and we'll also we'll need to add something. So where is it looking? We go to the manager from the hierarchy. We'll just drag that in and we're almost ready to go. We just need to choose a method. So from there, we'll choose settings and we'll choose toggle AO. If we now save that out, we can maximize and make sure it's maximized on play. Press play. And you can see that my toggle's in the bottom corner. And when I toggle it on and off, you can see the ambient occlusion say around here is on and off when I toggle the effect. So it makes it really nice, simple, easy, 
just to be able to toggle something off. You can create as many UI elements, you can create as many, add another method to this script and have it for the screen space reflections, anything like that. And you can add a lot more breathability to your scenes and add a lot more flexibility, whether it's settings, anything that you want, or gameplay features that you might need to able, enable. And you can obviously do it with any of the built-in specific settings within the post-processing volume. So if you need to edit the intensity, you can do that, but it depends on what you need to do. So hopefully you found it helpful. So thanks very much. See you soon.